Welcome. Either it's just me or there's quite a lot fewer of you today than last time. Oh well, I hope it wasn't too bad weather the last time there, and that's why, but well, thank you to you, those of you who did turn up. And I'm a bit sorry if, well, first if I need to stop during the lesson and have a few sips of coffee or, or coffee, or have to have a few breaks, my voice and my throat is beginning to get rather sore, so we might, uh, might also have to stop a slight bit early today, but I'll make up for it with putting, as usual, all the material we used throughout the lesson online. But we'll, we'll try to keep up as good as possible, as well as possible. So, that's it. I hope you've gotten the links for the last two lessons. I at least put the, as you can see, put both the videos from first time and second time online. And, well, hopefully there was a few new things last time that got a bit more interesting. And definitely today and the from now on, I hope it's going to be, well, more interesting than the first time because now we're beginning to talk a bit about more custom, how to customize your page. Today we'll touch a slight bit upon how to optimize your page, how to write. Well, not well. You could decide. You could do, You can. You could say write well, or at least write a, a slight bit better, or at least be aware of, be a bit more aware of how to write when you're writing text online, because. There's a lot of things to take in. Like there are a few things to take into consideration, if you want to your site to be picked up, or rather be picked, be picked up well by Google and similar. Because well, you will get tracked by all the search engines no matter what. The the, the problem, the different, uh, the dilemma is you want to be tracked well and be, want to be tracked according to your choice of keywords, not not due to whatever they find interesting on your site. So basically, think of search engine optimization as, well, you could say you have a dog and it, run, it, runs out or it runs around in your house, yeah, and you pretty much can't control your dog, but at least if you put, uh, put snacks in the right places, you know where you have the dog. That's basically what you're doing with Google and writing search in, in a search engine friendly way. You're putting snacks so, so the Google dog will find the right places on your website and, and, and not just running around on your site at random. So. That's what we are going to end with today. At first I noticed a few, well, things we didn't get, a few we didn't cover fully enough last time. The first of them is we talked a bit about themes and where to find themes and how to customize your theme, your theme and we brushed briefly upon the area, the topic of widgets. You can see widgets here are, this, basically this theme has three widget areas at the bottom. Three. And if we go to the dashboard, under appearance, widgets, you can basically see the name of the Widget areas, you could also find it under, if you go to theme, if you just go to customize and want to customize your theme, you can get access to the widget selection there too. But in my opinion, and it's fully okay if you disagree, you can see here widgets and then you, yeah, which is actually not quite all right. You can see the Photo widget area and so on yeah. on the active page here. In my opinion, I find it easier to, find, to get an overview of the widget areas here because it's true, like I said, some widget areas are not visible on all pages. Let's just go to make a new page. Like I mentioned briefly at first, a lot of themes comes with a few other options, and one of them is many themes has different templates for use on pages, and to a certain extent on posts. But many, but, but uh, 
especially page, many, especially pages is an area that many teams uh, have a few different templates for. So you can basically change the look of a page uh, on a page you publish by choosing a different template if your theme comes with that option. This might look very different if you're using a different theme than this one. You might have, have access to different templates or might not have access to the, might not have the option of templating your, page, your, your uh, pages layout at all. It all depends on the active theme. The theme really do decide everything about the look of, the, of, the, of your WordPress site. But this one allows, has quite a few different page templates. And so each tem page template actually has different options for having widget areas. So it might look at the, 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 yeah, the amount of widget areas, the placement of widget areas, that might not only look different from theme to theme, but actually also from which template, whichever template you, you might be using under your theme. So this is why it says that not all, not all widget areas are available on the current page template, because the front page only has, the, the, I set my front page up only to have three widget areas at bottom. But if you go on to the uh, appearance widgets, you can actually see all possible widget areas allowed by your theme, no matter what the active page is. So you can basically customize all widget areas from one place. For example, if I made to choose to make a video post, then I would put could put uh, may, chose to pay, make a, a video page, a page using a page post using the video template. Then the special widget areas available to that the, uh, that page would be well. You'll put the widgets that should be visible there here. This theme, no matter what template you use, always has three footer widgets, and those are the three you can see up here. We can see I had chose to add that add widget in the left one. Like you can see, the Google ad. Yeah. And that's another thing with themes. Many themes also come with their, with their own custom widgets. You can also get widgets standalone as plugins, which will an area we'll cover in a moment. Another little door from last time, which we need to cover a lot more in depth, in my opinion. Plugins, and we can get those from the, well, of course, either again, either from the official WordPress.org site or from places like uh, Theme Forest and similar, where you buy, well, themes and plugins, and for your can buy themes and plugins for your WordPress blog. But in this case, the Radium ad widget came with the theme because the theme is still it was developed by, uh, yeah a group calling himself Radium. What is widgets? Well, widgets are small things like, like you can see here, we can have maybe a widget that, con that can contain code for an app, or you can have a widget that contains a subscription box, or you can have Second, actually, I just think I'll stick with this one. You can have a widget that just shows some text. In this case, the address of a club. You can have a widget that shows the newest posts, right, newest, uh, newest uh, what the hell, uh, arrangements in the calendar. You can have a widget that shows on a, in our RSS feed, or again, a widget with some text. Widget can show tech, a selection of the mostly used tech, a, a tech cloud, the mostly used tech on the website. Some widgets show in a bit more as some themes choose to show it a bit more like a cloud than this, which is just a well a blob of text. You can have a widget showing the link to your archive where you can either show each month that you posted on your website in a chronological order, or you can just have a drop down where people can choose the month they want to see. For example, this archive, let's see what was posted back in December 2000. Not much, apparently. But yeah. 
So basically, widgets allow you to customize the look and, well, the look and options of your site. Design was even further without, Im without infring uh, infringing or changing the main design of the website. Widget areas allow you to put small, yeah, small options that do enhance the, well, the usability of your website. And luckily, WordPress does come with quite a few already in, uh, out of the box. For example, the archives, which is original. Then you can add a yeah, calendar, showing a calendar of the size post and so on. But WordPress comes with quite a few widgets. But, as I said, themes come with more widgets. You can download either some plugins come with either individual widgets, one plugin with one widget, or some plugins come with a lot of features and among them add a few widgets. Will show, I'll show you an example of that in a moment. So in short, you can get widgets from a lot of sources and they do allow you to customize the look and feel and options of your page even more. So if you, if you uh, download a theme, try to look, does it support widgets? Pretty much all modern themes does in some respect, but look at it and look, if, you, if the widget areas look, uh, are placed in interesting places on the theme, and do take that into consideration when choosing your theme, because maybe you would really like to have a small area of the website that shows well, if you use, for example, WooCommerce, you can have the, the you get or the option of having a widget that shows the newest, newest items in your webshop. That might be a good idea to have in an area of your website somewhere. For example, in the footer, where you can see, oh, here's the new, newest items. So, widgets can be used to a lot of good. You just need to be aware of the options. But yeah. I think that covers widgets. Basically, you can, as I said, there's basically like most things with WordPress, the sky's the limit to what you can actually add of options. Yeah, good. And like, yeah, just, this is also a WordPress site. Like this one was, have you assumed you those before? So, we've covered widgets now. Another way to add options to your website is to add plugins. What a plugin does is, well, what doesn't a plugin do? It's more easy to see. The plugin adds some snippets, some sort of some uh, objects, some snippets of code to your website that allows for more options in some way or the other. I'm going to go, go through a few of them, but, uh, a few of the most popular ones, and strangely enough, also some of you, uh, those are also some, of, um, in my opinion, some among some of the best. The thing with plugins is, just like themes, you need to be aware of them, and you need, of course, to update them because the most common, if people try to hack other uh, hack a WordPress sites, the most common attack vector is not WordPress itself. It's actually outdated plugins or outdated themes. So do you be aware to update your themes and plugins? Luckily, that's very easy. If you go to dashboard, you see number two option here in the menu is update, and WordPress itself will show you all things that have updates. In this case, it's just one of the default themes that needs to be updated because they just released WordPress 4.9 today. So, and plugins. Basically, you install them much like themes. You can say, add, you can of course see which plugins you've installed by going to plugins, install plugins, and then you'll get a long list that's not as graphically nice as the theme, theme list, no, but then again, many plugins doesn't have anything to do with graphics or the look of the site, so of course we don't need preview images like we do need preview images of the themes. So here you can see also what plugins you have installed. Some of them have settings options. You can deactivate them. You can have a plugin installed without having it active. That might be a bit, might be rather nice. You still need to update it though if there's security updates because it's still the code still lies on the web server. So the website just doesn't use it currently. But yeah, you can deactivate theme uh, plugins. You can see this one is not active. You can the one at the bottom, one I coded a long time ago. It's not active. 
but it is there. It's just inactive. Yeah, it's just not activated. So we can say activate if you want it. And of course, if you have an active plugin, you can say deactivate. Yeah. If you want a new one, you can go to yeah either add new here in the menu or at the top of the plugin list. Say add new. This looks remarkably much like the list that the page in WordPress where you, can, where you get access to the official repository of themes. Well, it's more or less the same. This is the official repository of plugins. You can either do that or go just go to WordPress.org and choose plugins. This is exactly the same as the site you're seeing in the blog, in the blog right now. And of course, let's say you found, found uh, you found a fancy plugin at uh, Team Forest, a premium plugin that costs money. Of course, you can you you then get to download it from Team Forest, and then you get a zip file usually, and then you just say upload plugin, just like with themes, like you would say upload themes on the theme, and then you choose the file with the, the file containing the plugin and install it. Luckily, it's well, I haven't seen anything that doesn't come with it, but it is best practice for themes. And if you down, if you buy something, for example, from Team Theme Forest. You do get an inst installation instruction with the pro either plugin or theme on how to do it, but yeah, you download it, get the zip file, and say install it here. But in most cases, I dare say even more so than with themes, you should be pretty much well covered by just using the ones from the official uh, WordPress repository. And yeah, like I said, plugins, they do add a lot of options to, to your website. And I'll go through a few of them that I definitely recommend. This one is, well, <coughs> if you choose not to disable comments on your website, if you choose to allow the user to, to comment on your website, uh, and yeah. anti-spam plugin like Akismet, especially Akismet, is very, extremely much, can't stretch enough how much recommended. What Akismet does, it's by the way developed by, developed by Automatic, the same theme that, may, that uh, mainly work on the WordPress core. So yeah, you know it works. <laughs> because it's the same same guys who mainly develops your website. Because, i just find it here. Come on. Yep, yeah. Comments on websites. If you do not have some kind of, well, anti-spam protection, like Akismet, your web website will be overrun by spam comments. It's not, it's, it's not if, they will be. Just to give you an example on how much spam there actually is, That's, if I remember correctly, I reset the database around May. So that's 6,000 spam comments in less than half a year. Actually, it's not that bad this year. It used to be worse. I used to get, oh, I think the la 15 was a bad year. I think I got around 200,000 spam comments in a year. You need some kind of spam filler, just like email. You need to equip your website with some kind of spam filler to prevent sp uh, to prevent uh, spam bots from uh, from uh, dropping comments about but buy cheap Nike shoes here or buy well whatever here I can show. I don't think I'll go to the just to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, actually, 
Hey, I did actually emptied out my spam box. Do I have one of my websites with active spam? But I will see one spam comedy at least. Yeah, that's a pretty good example. It doesn't make sense. The reason the spam bots are doing this is because they post some vague text that seems more or less innocuous, and then they either link to an email, or even better, they do link to a website, as the pro uh, author of the spam comment. Why do they do that? Well, the reason for the spam comment is twofold. Is twofold. They either, they either, they both, they either want to drop a comment where it might be a link in the top comment to buy cheap Nike shoes here or something similar. Or the comment has a link to a website. That means if, you if the user would click the author of the comment, it would be linked to the user's website, to the person's website. Who do that? People are too smart, uh, aren't people too, uh, are pe 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 people are sure too smart to do that. People are usually, yeah. Okay, but not all, but I think most people at least are too, too smart to click on link and spam comments. Yeah. But what about Google? But Google and all the other robots that roam the net and just follow links from one website to another. These kind of spam comments with the links would drive up the visit count of a website. If a website has many visitors, it, u it usually tends to rank higher in the search results. So people actually buy people, buy, well, maybe not people are doing it on purpose, but they are buying, they're having come, they ask companies to help them, help them grow their presence on Google. And then some scrupulous companies use spam bots to, pr to place links for their, cu for their customers' website around another website without really having any, without it any, yeah, keep making any sense. I mean, my blog about uh, education, I don't think the, I'm pretty sure Bao Bang Bad is not in my, is, wouldn't be of interest to the, to the visitors of this blog. That doesn't matter. It's just a, a bot placing the link there because then Google, then search engines would follow and drive traffic to the whatever website. So you want to block spam comments, and Akismet is one of the best tools of that. Sorry, I just digressed a bit. If you don't have a spam, have a filter install, uh, have a plugin, uh, have a spam filter installed like Akismet, you saw that uh, you can see on my website. What I had a folder here under comments named spam. Well, if I didn't have Akismet. I have to read every comment post to my website, click it as mark it myself as an admin, I go into the comment section of the website, look through the comments, mark each one as spam, and then it will be going to put into the spam folder. I don't want to do that. I don't know about you. I have better things to do my spend my time on than waste my time on looking for spam and, and mark it. That's where plugins like Akismet comes in. It's basically like the spam filter you have in your email email mailbox. Luckily, most of you aren't aware that your that your mail, mail that your mail that your email service, whatever email service you use, come uh, equipped with a spam email filter. It does. I'd be happy. The whole point of it is more or less invisible. You saw the text in the spam comment before. That doesn't really make much sense. That's why filters actually can. Well, basically, like anything, it's a bit of a cat and mouse. People who write spam try to make, write spam in a way that won't get caught by the filters, and people who write spam filters, they tend to make even more better and better filters to catch more spam. So basically, they read through, uh, the spam filter reads the comment, automatically reads the comment on your website, and decides, does it fulfill the criteria for it to be spam, and then if it does, it automatically throws it in the spam folder. Last time I checked, Akismet has an, an accuracy rate of 99.8. So it's pretty good at uh, detecting what's spam. Of course, if you go through your spam folder, you can say not spam, and then you basically teach Akismet, okay, this, part, this kind of comment is okay, it's not spam, and then it learns and gets more intelligent. The good thing about it is, it's not only you doing that. That's also why it has such a big accuracy rate. Akismet saves information, 
of course, sales information in an online service, you do also need to activate it. But basically, they have an, uh, there's a gigantic database cataloging spam and cataloging, and thus cataloging the way spam, spammers and spammers write spam. So basically, whenever someone posts, it checks, you, it checks the content of that post. Does it look like the spam someone else wrote in the, using the online database? And then if yes, it gets thrown into the spam folder. That's the same way email spam filters mainly work, actually. And then if you, if something gets true and you mark it as spam, then uh, Kismet notices that and puts that into the online database so it gets more into So thus, the more people who use it, the more intelligent and better to catch spam it gets. And Kismet has quite a few million users. That's why it's getting so, it's so good nowadays too. And that's definitely a service and a plugin I very much recommend if you use if you uh, allow people to write comments on your web blog, some kind of spam filter, you'll be happy for it. And Akismet is what is the best one, more or less. There are few other options, but more th most of them are actually dying, uh, dying, dying out because Akismet is so good. Nobody, there's no need to, well, try to be in competition there. And since it's free, nobody earns money for it. So why compete with a free service? That's great. Makes sense. So definitely, if you have comments enabled, use a Kismet. There's not much more to say about it. Usually, a lot of people having a website would also allow, uh, would also, maybe not if, uh, yeah, especially if you're having a shop, but also if you're representing a company, you like people to be able to write emails for you. I mean, I like to want, I want the customer to be able to write me an email and say, hey, I want you to do this freelance project for me. There's a lot of contact forms plugins for WordPress that has a contact form. When I'm saying a contact form, I, of course, mean. Basically, things like this. You know, you know how a contact form looks. There are a lot of plugins adding this option to your WordPress site. Yeah. One of the most popular ones for many years, as you can see, active installations, five plus million. Contact Form 7 is pretty popular, with good reason. It is one of the easiest to use plugins for contact forms, and it has a lot of options. You can, of you can, for example, uh, have it work together with capture plugins. You know captures. You probably also hate them. I do, at least. But I must admit they're necessary evil. You know those images with some scrambled text in it, and then you have to write the text. For example, uh, yeah, you know scrambled image where it says house inside. House inside. It's hard to read. On the image, and then you write, and then you have to write house to get on to be able to be allowed, for example, to present the email or be allowed onto the website and so on. That's the capture. Well, again, it's said and necessary evil unless you want bots to misuse your contact form and send you spam emails. So, contact form support uh, uh, seven supports capture. It works with Akismet. So, if people try to send you a spam email using a uh, send, your, send your spam email with your contact form via your contact form well it'll get filtered by uh, kismet and it will probably be filtered away and thrown uh, filtered and thrown into spam that's pretty neat those two plugins are just should work together contact form 7 is a great contact form there's not much more to say about it i mean contact forms aren't that interesting or sexy but they are very very useful and pretty much a must have on in on most websites. So yeah. And contact form seven is one of the best plugins for contact for providing an option of having a contact form on your website. This one, a lot of there's a lot of division about uh, divisiveness about is Jetpack good or not? A lot of people don't like Jetpack, find it to be too big and too cumbersome, but it's really gotten a lot better in the, in the last years. 
Again, it's developed by Automatic, the same people who made WordPress, and it adds, well, basically all the unique, the few unique features you have, the features you have on WordPress.com compared to your own installed WordPress, you can get those by, by, installing, the, by installing the free Jetpack, Jetpack plugin. What Jetpack does is a lot of a lot of all our options you get. That's always nice. Another statistics tool for your website. You can't. You can never have too many, too much statistics if you want to analyze how how your project does. You get the option uh, to to add your yeah. To uh, to uh, underneath each post, get the option of uh, sharing a post on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, something. You know all those buttons you see in the button I see underneath blog. Share this on and so on. Usually, many themes come for that op comes with that option. You could install yeah social share plugins individually, but but the uh, the well the toolbox or Swiss yeah Swiss knife Swiss knife that Jetpack truly is actually comes with that option too. So you get analytics, you get social sharing, you can have uh, related posts. Some th a lot of th some themes have the uh, have the option to show related posts in the yeah in the bottom of each post. You can have related posts shown. Jetpack has that option without having to change your theme. And then there's a few paid options. You can pay for a premium mem pay premium membership, basically just like paying for WordPress.com. You can pay for premium options. You don't really need those. You can get other plugins that add those options, that add the same options for free. But Jetpack, in my opinion, yeah, it's it's a pretty big plugin and thus a bit more heavy. But on the other hand, you get a lot of options in one package. There's also a few security options added, like yeah, two-factor authentication, secure login, and so on. Basically, you get a lot of other, a lot of extra options with with Jetpack, and it's free. Only dilemma is you do need to have a WordPress.com account. I think it's, the account is free. It's only it only costs money if you want to want to have your website hosted there. But you can make an account on WordPress, WordPress, uh, other one WordPress on the yeah, WordPress.com for free. So you just link yes to your free account on WordPress.com, then you have access to basically all the features of Jetpack and pretty much all the features you have on WordPress.com for free. Plus you have a few, a few, plus you have a lot more options on customizing and designing the theme site because you can choose whatever uh, theme and plugin you want and not just a few, op a few offered on WordPress.com. So basically this way, by then installing the Jetpack, Jetpack plugin, you get the best of both worlds. You get your own, your own site, you can uh, do, you can customize to your heart content and you get access to the WordPress.com only features for free. That's neat. By using a plugin. Yeah. So this is just an example. There's a lot of, there's uh, not a lot, there's I think four or five. There's not that many translation plugins. One that works well for me, not necessarily for everyone, is one called QTranslate X. You can see it on the website here. That basically allows you, allows you to add a menu option where you can, well, you can add any language to a website. In my case, it made most sense to make allow the user to switch between Danish and English. I can see this post is only in Danish. Oh, I choose the ling English language. Since this post is only said to be in Danish, it said, oh, this is only available in, in that. Well, then I have to change the language to Danish and ooh, I get a post. Nice. The way it looks in the back end is basically when you're making a new post, Using this way, with this, when you have this plugin installed and set up to, let's say I've set this up to have Danish and English language, basically when you're writing a post, you're getting two tabs. You then write the post in Danish, 
or presumably in the Danish, if the Danish language is active, and then you write the basic the post again in English, this time in English. Yeah. And then you think, well, why not, the, why not just use Google Translate? There are plugins out there that allow the you that uh, puts basically does the same, putting a language choose on you on your in uh, in a menu on, or somewhere else on your website. And then when you user click that button, Google uh, it automatically uses Google Translate to translate your content. But to be honest, are you satisfied with the quality of Google Translate? No, I, I hear some of you uh, sniggering. No, not really. That's why, in any, if you want to, in my opinion, if you want a professional website, do a multi-language website. Do translate all the content yourself, or at least have someone else who knows the language well. Do translate the language, the website manually. Do not let Google do it. You risk having your web, the, the text on your website look like nonsense because Google Translate isn't really that, isn't really that great. So I very much recommend if you want a multi-language website, it's easy, just like this, for example. Yeah, like you, like I just showed you. Use a plugin like this or some of the other ones, where you have to write the content in different languages. Sure, you might limit yourself a bit to having uh, access to the website translated to the multitude of language Google Translate offers. Yeah, but at least you know the translation you offer on your website, the language of uh, languages you offer on your website. They're good. Yeah. So this is another option you can add to your website with plugins multi language. That's pretty neat and very useful for, useful for many companies, but is be honest. Nowadays many companies do not only target one market in one language. You could say, well, then we do it in English, that's international. Yeah. But it does look a lot nicer if you target, for example, a day. For example, let's say you have a, day, a website where may, maybe your main demography is Danish, but you do you wouldn't mind if international customers order too. Then I'll make the web website have the main language of Danish, but the option to switch to English, or maybe vice versa. But in, at least have the option of the native language. People do feel a lot more comfortable using the native language. All statistics and Research show that people, no matter how international they feel, they are more comfortable with the native language. So you know, know your tar know your target audience, and unless you specifically only target international audiences or target English-speaking audiences, consider having the option of having the native language on the website too as an option. Of course, you need to spend time and money potentially translating into whatever native language your website has, but. In my opinion, it's a small price to pay for making the user user's life a bit more co uh, comfortable. And a happy user is a a happy user. Well, spends more time on the website, or and potentially, if it's a job, also buys more. So, translation plugins a definite recommendation from me. Q Translate X is just one among many. Then the big heavy hitter, heavy hitter, which I could spend, well, I think I could spend quite a few hours just talking about WooCommerce and how WooCommerce works. WooCommerce, like I mentioned in this in the first lesson, is the most popular e-commerce plugin for WordPress. WooCommerce is among the top most popular e-commerce solution in general. What WooCommerce does is adding let's see if we can see any we actually do not yeah they add the option just like you have pages and posts you then get the option of having product. You get an, uh, another po another option on the website have uh, named products, and then you can set up one of your one of your pages to show your products, or maybe show products. Products can also be put in to categories, just like posts and pages. So you can set up different pages on your website, for example, to show 
maybe all products or maybe show different categories of products. So for example, if a user clicks on the music in the menu, have an option to click on shoes, and then he sees all your, all your shoe products. If he clicks on t-shirts in the menu, then he sees all your t-shirt products. Basically, it, it, turns, it uh, turns the blog-centric WordPress concept into a full-fledged e-commerce option. And the good thing about WooCommerce is you can expand WooCommerce. Then there's, there's a lot of uh, plugins then named, for example, WooCommerce, ePay, WooCommerce, different things where you can add options of different payment options. Woo. But already out of the box, WooCommerce comes with options for, for example, PayPal and Google Pay. I think those are the two ones out of the box. But then you can add more payment options to the, to, uh, yeah, to WooCommerce. And in general, it basically works like a, like a web shop in one. Then you set up how many products you have. It keeps order of the stock. If you say you have a certain stock of items, it keeps order of that. And then they, if they are not on, well, basically it's a full-fledged e-commerce platform. There's not really, in a way, not that much, a uh, lot more to say about it, but in, in a different way, not that much more to say about it. You get an e an a full-fledged web shop as part of your website with the WooCommerce plugin. And yeah, we can talk a lot about how setting that up and adding options to that and so on. But this is a WordPress in general workshop, not a WooCommerce work workshop after all. But very much recommended if you want to, want to try and have it running your own workshop. And the good thing about it is being able to use credit cards, having a, having a, having a payment options of using credit cards, you can add that via plugins. Those the plugins aren't that costly, but do ha do having a deal with a company that has access to to credit cards that does cost quite a few quite a bit, quite a bit of money. I think last time I checked, it's around ten thousand krona per year to be able to use Dancourt on, on your website. That's a lot of money. So you take may, uh, opening up a web shop does cost money if you want to have be with want to make be make users able to use credit cards. The good thing is, because you need a, not just like a shop needs to pay for a credit card terminal, you need to pay for a digital equivalent to a credit card terminal on your website. But there's options, for example, like I said, it comes with support for PayPal out of the box. PayPal doesn't actually cost money to use, with a little but. PayPal is free to use, the PayPal has a lot of pay uh, payment tiers. You can choose the cheapest payment tier, you don't have to pay any kind of membership to use PayPal if you use a bit cheapest credit, cheapest tier. You do have, however, to have fork out 2% of every item, 2% of the price of every item you sell, every transaction, to PayPal if you choose not to pay any monthly salary for using PayPal. So it's cheap to get started with PayPal, but if you have a lot of customers, you quickly end up having to pay quite a lot of money to them. But it's free, more or less free to get started using PayPal as a payment option. So that's the way to get started with running your own web shop. And once you get popular and have earned quite a bit, earned some money, then you can switch to cheaper payment options than PayPal. But it's free to get started with using PayPal as a payment option with with WooCommerce. So if you feel creative and want to sell stuff on your own web shop or sell or similar, on, or sell some kind of yeah product or services on your web shop, do get started. It's easy to get started. It's free to get started. And, and yeah, so. Again, I think most of the theme of this, what I'm telling you is, experiment, try stuff out. It's rather easy to get started. Play around. Yeah? What about mobile pay? Also costs money to implement that. Okay. I, can't, I can't remember their prices, but mobile pay do cost the money too, yeah. Basically, I think most of the Danish options actually cost money, which sucks because there's a lot of, Dan there aren't that many, Dan there's not every Danish using PayPal. But, well, it, or Google Pay for that matter. I'm not even certain if Google, I think Google Pay support, uh, supports Denmark now, and uh, supports Denmark today, but I think I'm 90% I'm certain at least that uh, mobile pay does cost a monthly salary or something, some, some similar. If it costs as much as, uh, let's say, uh, having the option to use your Dan, uh, using a Dancord provider, I'm pretty sure mobile pay is a lot cheaper than having to, uh, than using Dancord, but it, I'm pretty sure it costs a monthly salary of some sort. But then again, if you 
and have a product you believe in, then it's worth investing money in running a shop after all. So, yeah. So, do get started, and if you're interested, in, then talk with some of your teachers or the school. Maybe we can have a course about uh, uh, specifically, specifically targeting WooCommerce next year, if there's interest in it. Oh, WooCommerce are eShops in general, but WooCommerce is one of the easiest to get get running. I talked about, I mentioned the first time that you could also use WordPress as a forum. Post of it in action. Well, okay, maybe not, but BB Press have, well, that's the option of basically hosting a forum on your website and it works and looks more or less like any other online forum. Forums aren't that popular nowadays in the age of the social networks where most people basically use Facebook for, any, for everything. But if you probably, you do remember the online forums that were popular some years ago and some are, a lot of them are still used. BB Press allows you to add, add, add Let's say you have a you make a page on a website called forum, and then when people click that, they basically have a full f access to a full fledged online forum where they can add their own users, may write posts and categories, and basically like any other online forum you know. But it's actually running on WordPress. Why are you just by having a plugin, you get the option of having a full fledged forum with you know with root user rights, and some people can post post images, people can use speed eco. Basically, what you can do in in uh, most other online forums, you can use you can do by having BB Press installed on your web WordPress page. Again, might not be useful for a company unless, for example, you can use it as a, as a support forum. And there are also a lot of dedicated support. There are also some dedicated support plugins, but there are, I have seen companies just using a simple BB Press forum as a support forum because, well, a support forum where people can write to other users and ask other users for comments or write to right to the company and so it's basically like any other forum anyway so why not just use a standard forum software for having a support forum that's what BB, BB what's one of the options of using BB press or maybe you're running a website on a blog slash maybe small shop on well just take one of the uh, one one of my former classmates she's very much into nail art maybe you're running a website about nail art and it makes sense to have a forum where people can post and co post pictures and comments about and tips to each other about how to do their nails. BB Press allows you to do that. Of course, WordPress has a comment section where you can comment each, po each post and so on. But that's just a then the comment comments are key to each post. This way, you have a proper forum where you can write things in a forum style. That's a nice option to have on your website. And there's a few, there's a few others, but BB Press is one of the popular, most popular ones. And there's also a few options to make that expand upon BB Press and actually gets you a full-fledged social network with profile pages and and walls and so on, like Facebook. But BB Press is a basic forum, and that's what many people just want on their website. This one, I mentioned before, you can say disable comments in your admin panel, but then you would see under each post, depending on the theme, you would see comments are dis disabled by this post. If you want to remove remove any trace of comments on your website at all, it shouldn't be any trace of it, uh, neither on the front end, what the user sees, or in the back end, to, uh, like you can see there was the comment option where you can go through comments. You want to room, you move any trace of having comments on your website. This is the plugin for you. I used that myself on uh, some of my and uh, some of my uh, customers' websites when I did when I and I actually use that a lot on customers' website when I do uh, freelance work because more, many companies does not want do not want comments on their web, on their blog on want people to have the option of commenting on their content. This one. If you install this plugin, basically it removes any trace of the comment option having ever been on the website. 
then of course, if you, if you should deactivate the plugin and remove it, the comments option up is back. But as long as you have this plugin installed, you cut it. You will forget that there were comments on your website or the option of having them there. That's the safest way, of course, of of not having comment any comment span, not having the comment option at all. So that's probably worth it a lot if you're making a company website. I don't use it much myself, but a lot of people use Mailchimp for having running mail lists and so on. Does any of you know that I heard have heard about the Mailchimp email software? Yeah. This basically integrates the option for your WordPress to come and communicate directly with Mailchimp, Mailchimp. and for example, people can say on the, you can have the option on the post say, uh, like the, uh, what's the English word? Uh, yeah, people can choose to stay to get an email whenever yeah, there's a new blog, a new post, new yeah, new content on your website or similar. All that option you can have. With this plugin, you can co combine that with Mailchimp, so people who subscribe to your website are automatically added, added to your Mailchimp list and so on. So, if you want, if you use Mailchimp, this and other plugins is definitely recommended because it allows you to integrate the service into your WordPress site, which is pretty neat. And of course, all these li all these uh, links, all these plugins are of course added in the post with the video from today, just like I did last time. Calendars may might not be that you well, well might not actually that many would also make sense for plugins for a company. There's quite a few calendar plugins for WordPress. My calendar is one I'm using myself, but there's quite there's quite a few, and many of them just uh, for example allows you to add, add a calendar video to the side of a website where you can then see upcoming events and so on. You can customize that. Like, that's not customize it quite a bit. There's not that much to say. It's basically just a calendar where you can make events and then people can read the description of those events. You can agree, link the events to posts and so on. For example, I'll show you in show you in live. For example, here you can see there's a day about Pokemon on Friday. If you click the link in the calendar, plug in, then you get to the post connected to the calendar. So a calendar plugin might not be a bad idea because if you if you if you have maybe a company that goes around a lot to a different uh, conferences and so on, then it might be nice to have a scheduled uh, have a, having a calendar and calendar on the side in a video area of your website or somewhere on your website where people can see next appearance, where we're going to the next where we where are we going to the next time. So calendars and can be very nice to have on your website too. Then we get to the boring ones, a few boring ones. And a, a thing that's definitely not boring the first time you've been secure, you've been hacked. WordPress is the most popular, thus there's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of people trying to hack WordPress sites. Thus, there's a lot of plugins in different ways for improving your, the, the security of your website. I'll get more into that on the in the in uh, lesson five, but I think security is a good plugin for security, and there's quite a few more. But I'll get much more into details about security and securing your WordPress site in the last lesson. Of course, there's plugins for making integration with Google Analytics of your website a lot easier. Google Analytics does provide a very insightful look on your website. Google Analytics is a free service. Don't trust it. It's don't trust it fully. I'm definitely it's definitely not what it used to be. Mainly because nowadays a lot of people are blocking Google trackers and blocking cookies and using uh, plugins to block ads and so on the website, which also block most Google services. So definitely take the statistics you get with, from Google Analytics with a slight grain of salt, but 
even with that said, it's still Google Analytics is still a useful tool because, like I said, you can never, you can almost never have too much analytics about your project. And the more statistics, the better. You just need to sort it. But Google Analytics is a great tool. is a great tool, and there's a lot of easy ways using plugins to add the options and add the tracking to your website. This is another area where people don't really think much. Images. What's one of the biggest things you put on websites? That's images. Images take up a lot of space. Images take up a lot of, of, of time to load. We might not think about it here because nowadays, here, especially here in Denmark, we are, mainly, we are very much sitting on very high speed internet connections. Not everybody is, especially not if you're making some, something for a different country. E, yeah, EVV, image optimizer, and a lot of other image optimizers, they do try, they, what they do is, when you upload an image to your WordPress blog, they take the image and reduce the quality slightly, usually not perceivable, to make the images smaller and thus load faster. Definitely re recommended for improving the speed of your website, some kind of image optimization for deep, because people are visual, people like images on the website, but images are heavy. So trying to reduce the image load, not, not, not only the amount of images, but especially try to use, reduce the size of, size of images with options like this. Again, caching, we won't get into detail about how it works, but adding a cache would also improve the, can also improve the speed of your website by as much as uh, several seconds, which is, trust me, a lot. And people do want a fast website. It means, definitely, if, you, if your website uh, loads in one second compared to four seconds, well, if it takes four seconds to load, you lose about 60% of your visitors. If it, if it loads within one se second, well, you have the, that many more visitors. So definitely try to improve your website speed in any way possible. And th having cash plugins is one of them. But this is especially both with the image optimization, especially when some are talking about cash. Do talk a bit with the people who know a bit more about websites because this is one of the few er areas where you can actually very easily ruin the look and uh, feel of your website if you set up your cache plugins incorrectly. But they do add, they do speed up the website a lot, so they're definitely worth it. You just need to put a bit tough time into setting them up. Another, yeah, the other, another popular one, B3 Total Cache, basically Super Cache and B3 are the two most popular cache plugins. And then we get to the last area, last area for today, Search engine optimization. Yoast is a plugin that has a lot of the options to make search engine optimization easier for, well, for the authors on your website. Do you need a plugin to search engine, op search engine optimize, optimize your website? Yeah. No, actually not. You can basically do everything the plugin does by hand and writing everything and uh, do and. Uh, do do uh, uh, changing a few things in your settings of your website, change a few things in the uh, in a few files, edit a few things in your themes and so on by hand. You can do it without the plugin. This just makes it a lot easier and more accessible. So you know you don't need the plugin. I just recommend it because it makes your life easier. Yoast is, Yoast is by far the most popular search engine optimization plugin for WordPress. How many million users does it have currently? Ah, five per million. They stop at five plus million. Kind of sad. But it is definitely the most popular one, and it is very good. It has a f it had a few ups and downs, and a year ago there was a quite a while. I wouldn't recommend it as the best one, but they bounced back, and it is still one of it's still it is still one of the top. Plugins for making search engine optimization, optimizing WordPress easier. So definitely worst Yoast, definitely recommend it. I'll show you how it looks and how to use it in a moment. 
another very good SEO plugin, all in one SEO pack. It's you notice both Yoast and this are updated very regularly. This one was updated 13 minutes ago. It's definitely up to date and it does most of the things that Yoast does, basically does all of the same things actually. It just looks a bit different and I think most people would find Yoast to be a slight bit more user friendly than uh, all in one. Basically because Yoast has a very visual <laughs> way of showing if you write your post in a good way in a search engine friendly way or not. You might have noticed Yoast had the Yoast had the traffic lights. It basically grades your post quality by traffic lights. Which is very user friendly in my way. So I which is why I suggest start with Yoast, but this one is just as good if you if you find Yoast a bit lagging or something. This one is also very great. Both are both, both are recommended. But only use one because they do the same thing and they would, well basically they would be, if you install both on the same site, they would, they would, you would have in the admin area, the user won't see it, but in the admin area, you'll have pop out saying, this one conflicts with me, do something. So choose one, of the, one or the other, one or the other. Both are good. Yeah. That was actually a bit more for security. Word fence is also a great security option. We'll get back to that security later on. But this is search engine optimization. What is search engine, opt search engine optimization? Oh, do get in the find a seat. Um, search engine optimization is writing, well, basically writing everything on your website in a way so that search, en search engines, yeah, like it. Why do search, en urgent search engines have to like, like your website? And what is a search engine? Search engine, search engine even. Well, you all know what search, en search engines are. You've used Google. Some of you feel alternative or very attached to Microsoft. You might use Bing. You also know Yahoo. Most of you probably heard of them at least. They are not very popular as a search engine more anymore, but. They used to be some of the more exotic among you might use DuckDuckGo as a search engine. There's a, there's a few search engines where the big, I was about to say big bad because they're definitely doing a lot of bad things nowadays, but big bad is Google. You want your website to rank, to be, you want people to find your website after all. And if you want, if you have a website about dog feed, you definitely want to be in the top ranks because then people go to your website and might, if you have a shop, buy from your shop because people do tend to check, yeah, check the list. And sad fact is, how many of you, let's say you search for something on Google, how many of you ever go to page two of the search results? That's two among you. Wow, that many. Yeah, that's why you want your site to have a good, have as good, have as have as high a rank as possible. People usually are impatient and, and only check the first ten results. That's why search engine optimization matters a lot because you want your customers to find your website. But how did Google actually, and how do Google and the others actually, how do they find your website? They have what is actually called robots, which might be a bit misleading. There are nothing mechanical about them, but they have software pieces, which people, for some odd reason, also call robots. Basically, they have small, they have, a, have computers running and searching the internet. What they do is, they find, they may go to one website, oh, there's a link, the one website they know, oh, there's a link on that website. They follow that link to another website, and to another website, and another website, so basically, if you, if you find a website, they just jump to the next and to the next and to the next and to the next. That's of course nice because th that way the whole internet get indexed at some point because very few people don't link to anyone else. You actually get punished by not linking to other sites on your uh, uh, other websites in your in your content. That degrades. That actually is a degrading quality in in Google in uh, the eyes of Google and other search 
I did. So you do do have at least one link to your to other to uh, external websites per post. We'll get to back to that in a moment. So they troll the net and, and, and index it. That's also why the spam bots try to drop links everywhere for whatever their customers want them to link to. So why do something about having con having quality content on your website when Google when it just uh, when Google just jumps 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 on? Well, they don't. They go, they find they they link they uh, find a link to your website. They go to the website. Then you, as a website owner, want them to spend as much time on your website as possible, and have and have as high quality of content on your website as possible, because they have an inter internal algorithm. With which, with which is very much secure. They, nobody knows exactly how Google's al algorithm works. There's a whole industry wor working with search engine optimization that are dying to find out how Google's al algorithm works because if, if they knew how Google creates, Google uh, judges web pages, they would know how to put, pe put their customers on top of Google search results. But then again, Google want to Google try and optimize and I and I improve their search algorithm all the time by how they judge the sites, so it's a constant cat and mouse. So you want Google to find your, find the content on your website, spend as much quality, spend as much time on your website if far as possible. That means writing in a way so you put the keywords in uh, at least a good amount, but not too much because then you're keyword spamming and Google and if you write dog 20 times on your web on, on a single page, Google would know, okay, he's just trying to spam the word dog. He, do, he doesn't ever actually have any quality content about dogs. And that's the key. Nowadays, it's, their algorithms are so intelligent, they are actually trying to judge the quality of your content. So you can't spam a keyword too much. People did that 15, 15 20 years ago and it worked. Doesn't nowadays, by far, you actually get punished by spamming a key, by keyword spamming. You have to write what is considered quality content. And there's a whole industry about that. And so you need to understand at least a few basics about how to write and work say, search engine friendly. The most important thing also, results, they do not come overnight. Usually when you try to optimize your website, it takes between one and three months to notice to, for any difference to hit the Google ranking. So it's, you don't get results overnight. It takes, a, it takes quite a while for you to try and improve your site, search engine friendliness. That's just how it is. That doesn't mean you should stop. No. It's so important to get the top spot in the search engine, search engines that you just have to take into consideration. It takes a while. So you can see, okay, I've improved this month, I've improved this, then one month ahead, haven't had much of an improve, haven't had much of an uh, effect. Then we'll try to uh, to tweak it a bit more and so on. Just know that it takes a long while for, for results to improve, but constantly try and make your site better. Never stop. Yeah, a lot of people, of course, stay away from guaranteed SEO because nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed in this this world. Okay, the old, car, the old uh, adverb says, only two things are guaranteed in life, death and taxes. I think that's still true, but apart from death and taxes, nothing is guaranteed in life. So don't believe anyone who says they can guarantee good search, good, uh, good uh, placement on Google. They, they are usually lying, unless they're Google themselves. This is the most important. Two ones. Publish outstanding content. Publish, yeah, unique content. Publish slightly longer content. We get to that when we go to Yoast and do keyword research. Let's take the the point about uh, the, take the example about uh, let's say a, a shop selling dog food. The keyword dog, would that be a good keyword to, for, for, people to, for, for people to find your specific website? No. 
There are a lot of websites out there about dogs. Not as many as about cats, because cats rule the internet for some odd reason. But dogs are popular. There's a lot of websites about dogs. That means to optimize your site to to rank any way anywhere high on dog on the dog on the dog keyword. That bit that require a lot of work. Well, dog food then. Dogs also need to eat. There's also a lot of websites about dog food. Maybe you should try to optimize it even more. Maybe your your shop specializes in selling organic dog food. Now we're getting somewhere. That's a bit more specific, yeah. Then you want to get everyone just searching, then optimizing for organic dog food. Well, okay, it might not be optimized for dog food in general, but usually people who specifically want organic dog food, they're searching for organic dog food. So finding the good keywords, there's a lot of market research that needs to be done where done there, and a lot of market awareness. So do be aware of the market for your website. That's, I think that goes for pretty, pretty much anything, anywhere you're trying to get customers' attention. Do a lot of research. What do your customers actually want? What key, what keywords would fit them the most? And then try to optimize for the keywords that fit your customer target audience the most. Yeah. And another one, write for readers, not search engines. That should be pretty obvious. Yeah, you want a high rank in Google, but you actually want to make your human readers happy too. And Google actually, they actually trying to judge it. It looks, it does it look like yeah, an organic article written for organic people, not just for digital robots. So they actually try to judge that too. Does it look like a proper proper content? And publish fresh content frequently. A lot of companies do not take that into consideration. They make a website. Ooh, we have a website. Now we're on the internet. And then they don't do anything for the next three years. Actually, I haven't the, the current numbers, but at least a year ago, statistics showed make one post per month, you get a certain amount of visitors, make a one post per week, you get 60% more visitors. Do post, do put new content on your website regularly. It definitely gets you a lot more visitors. Not only because each time a new content on your, a new, uh, not, not at least because every time Google goes to your say, is a page is finds, oh, there's new content, I need to re-index the, the whole website. So basically, it helps search engines make sure, shows them your website is up to date and fresh, and it makes it more interesting for your users. There's a reason for the users to come check your company website each week, instead of maybe one, once per half year. So, Publish fresh content frequently. Of course, if you have a company website, you don't need to put this week. This, uh, the, we, this week, the boss had the, the, the it was the boss' birthday. Well, such content might not make any sense for your customers. But maybe this week we began working on a new super, super secret project. Stay in touch and writing a few lines as much as you can in close about your new super, super secret project. That would both be interesting for your customers. And making sure that your website, ooh, both that would be interesting for your customers and they can see this company is still alive. They're doing something great. They're doing something interesting. I want to see what the new super secret project is about. I'll come back next week and see if they have enclosed more details. Yeah. Publish frequently and write for, and write for readers. And the last one, last two ones, they should be obvious. Make your website user-friendly. Make your website looks nice. Make your website load fast. Do make your website easy to navigate because then more people would use your website. And then those basically has a lot to do with your choice of theme. Find a theme that's both user-friendly and pretty fast and you're on the right track. So, Basically, think like a user. And if you have, and if you're working on a project, it might be hard to think of the user like as a user because, well, it's your website, it's your baby. 
then ask your significant other. How do they find the website? Usually they know you and might not, they might not be critical where they be, but at least ask them. Ask your friends. Maybe if your target audience is elderly people, if your target audience, target audience is, well, slightly older people, ask your parents. Maybe ask your parents to show the website to their friends and get some feedback. Do they, do they think it's easy to use your website? It might be easy for you, but is it easy to use for your target audience? Again, do user research. One thing is you think it's easy to use, but does the user think it's easy to use? But again, that might not have much to do with, because you might think, that does not have much to do with search engines. Maybe not, no, actually, search engines do test if the website is slow, it does get a download. So it has the speed at least, but the user friendliness, well, not search engines, but users. And the more users come to your site organically, by themselves. For example, if you say to your mate next to you, this website is great, check it out. Google does, to a certain extent, register what websites people use, especially if you're using Chrome. So, Google, to a certain extent, you're always in some way tracked. So, of course, they know, hey, this website is popular. They also know if a lot, a lot of people search for a certain website and click it and stay, click it. Actually, I didn't see, if you're using Google Analytics, Google does collect, does collect information on how popular a website is and how, how much people are using on it. That's the backside of using Google Analytics. But on the other hand, well, if they know that, they can send that, they, they know that that will also influence how well the site is doing. So to a certain extent, it's win-win. But yeah. Make your website user-friendly so people, so users use it. Good. I'll post these articles about search engine optimization along with the video for, from to, for today. Good. I promise to show you Yoast, how it actually works. Bear with this website being in Danish. I just go to one of the previously written posts that'd be easier to show. That's an option. Actually, I might have mentioned that you got a few options from uh, Jetpack. The contact form here, that's also from Jetpack. But also, Jetpack's also Jetpack also comes with a built-in contact form. Again, it's a Swiss knife of, of plugins, basically. Yeah, you can see I have some, I have a WordPress post here. And I have it both in Danish, English, and German. Those are the languages. Um, Best that. When you've installed Yoast, basically it judges your website, your post, page, whatever, on readability. This one's good. And search engine optimization, basically, yeah, how SEO friendly your website, your page, your post is. It's also good here. You can see it's green. Like I said, it uses a traffic light for judging. When you've installed, Jetpack. Yeah. You get this big box. Jetpack that. When you've installed Yoast, of course, it's Yoast I'm talking about. You get this box underneath your post called Yoast is Yoast SEO. Then here you set a focus keyword, focus search word, focus keyword, in this case manga. And then, then this plugin checks the text in your post. How many, how, many, how many times is the word mentioned? Too many? That's about, if the keyword is more than 2.5% of the, of the total, total amount of words in your post, 2.5% is actually not that much. Then it gets, then it's, uh, gets a negative impact. If it's if your keyword is less than a half percent of the words used on your post, 
it also gets a negative impact. So you need to have your keyword around two percent of your having keyword to having your keyword to be around two percent of your of the words words used in your post. That's what I meant by writing SEO friendly. Luckily, plugins like yours makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, you'd have to read through the, your post yourself and check how many percent is there and so on. Yours does that to you. Does that for you. That's very nice. And then you can see down here, analyses. How does it do? Then it mentions, you set the key, you write the keyword in the, your, in the box up here, and then yours says, does an analysis and says, oh, there's no meter description in above. That's okay. That's, that's a bad thing. Not that much. That's not, more, not that important. Oh, you're linking to another website with the focus keyword you're using. That might not be. Then, then the other side might get a better, better rank than yours. How, how many? Yeah. yeah. How much is the keyword used? In this case, 0.3%. That's too low. It has been found two times in the text. 0.3%, that is a bit low. Maybe I should write, use the keyword a bit more on the sixth I've read. And then the orange ones, I haven't used it in any, uh, subti in any uh, subtitles, for example, H2. In this case, this way I wrote this, I don't want to have section headers, so I don't really care about that. Yeah, the title of the website, it has the focus keyword, but it's not in the beginning. The keyword should be in the beginning, beginning to rank best. And the short title for this page is a bit too long. Usually you should keep your title for your posts at, at around 50 letters. More than 50 letters is, a, is too long. More than 100 let letters is a lot too long. So, again, this plugin helps you judge that. Good things. You are using no links without, uh, with no follow. But there's two normal links. Two normal links, that's great. Google likes if you're linking to Google and other engines like if you're linking to other websites. That makes you appear credible. So that's a plus. I have links. I have no internal links. No, but I have 20 normal internal links. Right, no internal links with no follow. But I have 20 normal internal links. That's great. Because, as I said, Google follows, follow links. So yeah, they might jump onto another website. But if you, for example, have a menu then, and have links on your own website, let's, would example, for example, be menus or other options. Right. I'll just show you the website. There might be the post that might be, make it easier to see. There's links in the menu. That's links. Google would, uh, would, you, would probably hit those and run around my website by following those links. Huh? I have a related posts in the bottom. That's also links. That's another way for Google to troll around my own website to find, to read my own website instead of going on. But I do have a link to another website, which Ups my credibility in the eyes of Google. I only don't want to hug them, I actually allow them to go on to. That is a thumbs up in their opinion, and so on. So, internal links are good, external links are good, Google likes links. Yeah, the focus keyword in the first, in the first uh, the, the part of the text, that's also good. I mean, if you're writing something, why wouldn't you have the f have the main word in the first paragraph. It wouldn't make any sense if you didn't have your main keyword in the first paragraph of the content. So, of course, I have this here. The pictures on this side has all attributes. Do you remember I said something about when, put when putting posts on your webs on your uh, like putting uh, images in your post? In this case, it's a gallery, but. 
it's more or less the same with galleries it's still images after all remember to put something in as in this box called alt text there are two reasons for that well in the upper one here that's the image text if you hover over the image there'll be this way this will be shown why is that not enough all text if there are some of your users I have a few friends who have very bad eyesight they have to use screen they might they still they still have a, a slight bit of eyesight left so they can still use websites but they do use screen readers to get them read aloud because it takes them a lot of time to read text on screen because the eyesight is very bad. They basically need to say, say it, sit 10, min, 10 centimeters uh, away from the screen. They use screen readers a lot, but you can't read an image aloud. At least the computers aren't intelligent enough to see, okay, there's, an there's a girl on this image and she looks like this and so on. Computers can't read images aloud yet. They can't see after all. It would have to be some very interesting analytics to be able to analyze an image and then read it aloud. That's why you put alt text in. So if a user scrolls down, gets his, gets the web page read aloud, and scrolls down to an image, then you can click the image, and then what? Uh, then you've written what is shown on the image as alt text. Then that text you wrote there would get read aloud. So in this way, your image, your actually your website is actually handicap friendly because uh, sight impaired can you can actually get the images read aloud. That's both a plus. Well, ethically, because you are you're thinking of the a handicap. That's a big plus for you. You're nice. You're a nice guy or girl. But well, like I said, computers can't see. So what basically Google does, what what the search what the search robots does when they come come across your website, they just read. They can't see the images, but they can read the alt text. Ah, then Google would know you might have a picture of organic dog food on your website. That puts a plus up on your organic dog food ranking. That's why all this is important, both to be be uh, nice to handicapped people and because search engines use that to index your images. So always have all text for your images. Doesn't really matter if you have the hover text set in the the text so that usually the user sees it when hovering about it and such. We don't care about that. That's not that important. But the all text always have that. It does improve your, it, Google likes that, it improves your search ranking. Yeah. You can say it's seven using this plugin. Right, yep. We we'll basically check this SEO title here. That's also okay. And the last one, if you haven't used the search word a lot, I mean, if you write, 100 posts about organic dog food, then Google wouldn't know which post on your website about organic dog food should they direct you to. So try to find unique keywords if you write unique content after all. You might have a, have a page about, you know, have a product or page, doesn't really matter, about pedigree organic dog food. That would be more unique than just having everything about organic dog food in one big food pool. So, yeah. And then again, this does not change anything about your content it only ranks it and helps you write the content in a better way and this one might need might not be that usual to us Danes because it tend to screw up when trying to judge Danish but at least it works when you're writing in it's writing English it makes sense that actually also try and judge your readability do you write too long sentences? Do you write too many? Do you have to? Do you use too many long words and so on? Take it with a grain of salt if you're writing any other language than English. The rules for readability and are slightly different from language to language. So take it with a grain of salt with anything else than English. But for English, take it as it is pretty sound of advice for writing in a way that you yeah. Read, that's very readable and user friendly. Yeah, I think that was a very brief introduction to search engine optimization and writing slightly search engine friendly. 
I think the main point would be, do you use a research before thinking about what keywords to use? And, yeah? Because there's a lot of other options, other things to it. The overall ranking is good. Just need to I'll go back to this one here. The overall rating, as you can see, it, there are some. It's basically the overall rating up there saying good or bad. It's basically taking all these points into consideration to get at the overall ranking up on the up in the top. And thus, there's a, there's a lot more, and apparently higher importance, green, green points than the few red points. So overall ranking is good. I mean, you can, I think it would be pretty hard to write an easy to read text where you hit everything green. So you, at least you have to spend a lot of time thinking and fitting and thinking and changing and working on your text to get everything green. So of course you, uh, so of course there might be some things that might to be totally optimal in your text, but then again there might be a lot of other good things. So trying to hit, trying to hit so at least get the overall ranking green. And remember, this is just a help for you. It doesn't change anything. It's you who changed the text. It's just your, t it's your text that's just being, it's just helping you by judging it for you. And again, nobody knows what Google thinks. So, just having posts with green ranks and being great at everything might not own, might not result in you having a high rank because you have a you might optimize your website yeah but there's all competitors out there trying to for buying for the same keyword unless you have a very obscure keyword then of course you might be it might be easier in a way we Danes have it a bit easier than because we have <laughs> there's not that many day competitors searching for if you if you're working on something with a Danish keyword, a specific Danish keyword. I think Hunemel is a lot less contested than dog food after all. So, in a way that makes it a lot easier. It is a lot easier to, to, to uh, optimize for a limited market than for as big as international as certainly optimizing for English keywords are, or keywords that also use in English are, so, yeah. And I can't give any definitive ways of getting on top of credit getting on top because they change it all the time and they're changing they're optimizing the rules and some points are more important one month than they are the next because they, they are all, they are changing it all the time to get get users the best search results and that might, might that makes it hard as a company because you need constantly need to stay on top of your game and stay and constantly improve your website to rank high on google it takes a lot of work and probably cost a lot of money. There's a reason that uh, search, engine, search, engine, search engine optimization specialists, companies specializing in that, they take a lot of money for the services. And if you, re if you can prove that you're good at search engine optimization, you can earn a lot of money. But it takes a lot of work and you constantly need to improve your game because Google isn't resting. They're improving their game on getting users the best one. Because after all, when we are trying to search engine optimization, we do want to cheat Google and no matter what, get your content on top. And they don't want that. They want, do want what they think is the best on top. That's doesn't, not necessarily you. But still, try to be the best you that you can be. Not just with WordPress, but in general. Thank you for listening.